Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. Today I wanted to come out and share with you a word uh, that my friend Vera received from the Lord about a week ago. And this word that she received, I believe, is for the entire body of Christ. And I believe it is an on-time word. It is applicable to what many of us are experiencing right now. And, uh, and I believe that this word will help us to get our, our focus realigned as, as we need to in these last hours. Okay, so in uh, what Vera received, she said she was getting out of bed and she very clearly heard the Lord speak into her spirit. Do you have the faith to go the extra mile? Do you have the faith to go the extra mile? And she said, Vera said immediately when she heard that, as she was thinking about what the Lord was communicating, the, the scripture came to mind from Luke 18, verse 8, where Jesus says, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on earth? All right, so in order to give you some context about what I believe Jesus was speaking about when he said that and when uh, the word he gave to, to my friend Vera, uh, I'm going to read Luke 18, verses 1 through 8. Okay, this is what Jesus said. Now, he was telling them a parable to show that at all times, at all times, they ought to pray and not to lose heart. Okay, so this is the whole point of what Jesus is about to share, so that we as the body of Christ will not lose heart when things get difficult. He said, saying in a certain city, there was a judge who did not fear God and did not respect man. There was a widow in that city, and she kept coming to him saying, give me legal protection from my opponent. For a while he was unwilling, but afterward he said to himself, even though I do not fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow bothers me, I will give her legal protection. Otherwise, by continually coming, she will wear me out. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge said. Now, will not God bring about justice for his elect who cry to him day and night? And will he delay long over them? I tell you that he will bring about justice for them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Okay, so... Jesus is making a comparison between an unjust king and God, all right? And he's basically saying, even though this unjust king didn't fear man or God, he gave this woman justice just because she kept coming to him. And will God, who is a just God and a loving God, not do the same for us? And see, the Lord is just assuring us that when we get tired and we get weary of the injustices around us and the evil that seems to be mounting up and coming um, to a pinnacle, we have to know that in his perfect time, God is going to take care of this. He, nobody's getting away with anything, okay? But God wants us to remain steady in all of this. And with the word he gave Vera, he is challenging us to keep our hearts right before him. See, because the faith that he's talking about here uh, is connected to that extra mile. And to understand what that means, I want to read you the scripture that surrounds that in Matthew chapter 5. If you want to turn there with me, it's verses 38 through 41. This is what the Lord is looking for in, in the body of Christ. This is what he was asking, am I going to find this on earth when I return? You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Okay, this is law. He's citing the Mosaic law. But I say to you, do not resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. Okay, so Jesus quotes the law. And now he's presenting a different, a new philosophy for thinking. He says, if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, let him have your coat also. Whoever forces you to go one mile, go with him too. So Jesus is contrasting law with this new philosophy that as we look at this closer is grace. See, when he says that extra mile, in, in the uh, time when Jesus was on the earth, 
the Israelites were under Roman rule. So a, a Roman soldier could at any time require a Hebrew to carry their load for one mile. That was the law. But Jesus is saying, don't just go one mile, go two. That second mile is an act of grace. It's an act of love. Okay. And it's important for us to realize that that in these last hours, in the, in this in these end times, that things are going to be happening that can very easily cause us to turn away from love and become cold-hearted. In fact, Jesus warned of that in Matthew 24, 12. He said, and because iniquity, and that word iniquity there is lawlessness, uh, G458, shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Okay, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, Matthew 24, 12. So if we're not careful, we could very easily be pulled into this cold-hearted mentality where we let the actions of others define who we are and how we behave. What Jesus wants from us is a heart that will remain tender before him. A heart that will allow his love and kindness to continue to be poured into us and into this world. Uh, because this is when it matters the most. When you're in an extremely dark room, even the smallest light will stand out. And so even a little act of kindness will really make a difference today. Do we have the faith to go the extra mile? Do we have the faith to continue to walk in God's grace, in his love toward others, even when it seems like wickedness and, and lawlessness and crime and evil are reaching a pinnacle? We have to trust that in his perfect time, God is going to make everything right. Nobody gets away with anything. But while we're here, the Lord is looking for faith the faith that it takes to keep trusting him and walk in love, love toward him, love towards one another. Jesus said, by this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And in Romans chapter five, verse five, I, I think of how, I don't know if you've ever heard of Corey Ten Boom. She was in the concentration camps uh, in Germany and she watched her sister be beat by a certain German soldier. And uh, after she got out of those concentration camps, she was ministering to people. She was going to churches and ministering. And one day she was greeting people and she happened to notice the German soldier who she had seen beating her sister which her sister Betsy died in the German concentration camps. But this man came up to Corey and he said to her, I got saved after World War II ended. And he said, I have been looking for someone who I hurt to ask for forgiveness. And he reached his hand out to Corey and asked her, will you forgive me? And Corey was kind of frozen there, not feeling like she could forgive him, not feeling it. And the Holy Spirit reminded her of a scripture in Romans. It's Romans chapter 5, verse 5, and I want to read it to you. And it says, And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. The love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So as she remembered that scripture, she realized she didn't have to come up with the love herself for this man, that the, the love of God was being poured into her. And then she uh, was able to reach out her hand and, and shake that man's hand and forgive him. And that's how it is with us, church. We can't produce the love. We can't produce the kindness on our own. The, the command was given for us to love one another. Therefore, the grace is being poured out for us to do so. Uh, if God commands something, he pours the grace out for us to be able to do it. And, th and that is true with love. And so I encourage you, look to the Lord. Pray that he will every day refresh your heart with new love and new grace and kindness for the people around you or for the people you cross paths with. 
And let's continue walking in that love so that when the Lord Jesus does return, he will find faith in us as we are walking in love toward others. Please take this message to the Lord in prayer. Ask him for a confirmation, church. And as always, it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.